First message, dream big. Dream big. Dream big. Uh, Regina didn't know the title of the message or whatever, but what she spoke was big. You have to dream way bigger than you. Because <laughs> if you can do it, you wouldn't need him. <laughs> if you could do it in yourself, I don't need him. But when you ask me to go do this and that, oh, I need you. But we're, here it is. I'm not, this is what I'm catching. Men, we're going to the conference this week. Anybody going to the conference, meet me over there at the end of service. We'll get things together. But you're going to understand the importance because 23 is all I'm hearing is big. It's big, big in different directions, big. Because it's setting up, the presence of 23 is setting up the 24 election. Yes. Things will be exposed. Yes. Things that were hidden will be exposed and it will be big. And the Lord said, it's time for the church to start dreaming big. It's time for you to start dreaming big. Uh, Job says this in Job 33. You thought I was going to, you thought I was going to Joseph in uh, the Genesis. Aha, uh -huh. you know, going to Job. Just for a moment. Don't want to stay in Job too long. <laughs> All right, it says, in a dream, in a dream, in a vision of the night, in a dream, he says that a lot of young men chill. See, visions, all interesting dreams. I think I'm a little bit of both now. I think I'm halfway crossing over. I, I do dreams and visions, but I'm leaning, I'm leaning more to the dream side now. <laughs> I must be at a certain point in life. But I still get visions, but I get more dreams and visions. Must be getting a little old. The ball spot must be showing. He says, in a dream and a vision, look, when deep sleep falls upon men, when slumbering on their beds, Verse 16, then he, he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions Amen. and dreams. And a few things I want to share about dreams. Number one is this, that you have to dream big. But number one thing I have to understand is you have to take the limits off of your God and off of yourself and off of you. You have to take the limits off. We limit we think too much, listen, I understand, we think reality and natural. And when we do that, we limit the opportunity for God to do something because we tie his hands because in reality, we doubt that he is able to do what he said he was going to do. And when I read this, it, it grabbed me because you have to dream to see your reward. Whatever your reward is, salvation for your children, whatever your reward is, marriage healed or whatever it be, that is your reward. And you have to dream because in dreaming you have to see. If you can't see it, you will never receive it. You understand that? It's very important that you have to see your husband heal or you heal you have to see marriages you have to see the kid coming to Christ just you have to see repentance if you don't see it you will never speak it and I say this and you hear me there's three things I live by you see it you say it and you seize it come on you got that see it say it seize it Amen. It's easy. See it. Come on. Say it. Seize it. See, you got to you got to see it so you can speak it. And then when you speak it, that which is in the unseen can manifest into reality, into the scene. But it will never happen if you keep your mouth shut. Because you won't you won't see it. That you won't see your healing. Then you won't believe your healing. And in Genesis, Ab Abram and Lot was, a Lot was uh, Abram's uncle. It was nephew, uncle, nep nephew. And he, he took care of his nephew. But here, Lot and Abram had two different beliefs in God. Abram believed that God was his source of everything. 
Lot lived in a double world of a double standard. He had one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. Many people today live with both feet in different kingdoms. Because Lot had, was a believer, but he still had a lot of worldliness in him. His wife had to look back. Um, that's next week. Don't look back. His wife looked back at what she was leaving because she was focused on stuff. And then when Abraham, Abram and Lot separated, something happened. When you separate yourself from the things of this world, God can begin to do something and give you your reward. Amen. The word of God says this, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, and then he said something, you got to catch this, lift up your eyes now. It was a, it was a fresh word that came into the spirit. Lift up your, no, see it now. And, to, and look from the place where you are. That's called destiny. It's called vision. Look from where you're at. Look at the north, the south, the east, and the west. Look in these directions. And, and this is this. Look at this thing. But you see, you have to see it so you can look at it and say it and sees it. He, does, he doesn't show you the whole picture. When somebody prophesies, they prophesy in part. They don't show you the whole thing. It, we only see in part of things. We don't see the whole picture because if God showed you the whole picture, you'd probably go home and cry. So he gives you a piece of what you need. He says, now you have to step out in faith. Okay? And for, he said this, for all the land which you see, I give you and your descendants forever. I will make you a descendants of the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also will be numbered. He didn't have any children at the time. And this is what he says. You have to look at it. And you have to see it. And he says, for what? Lift up your eyes now. And here's what I want to talk about. Now is the word of faith. Faith is a window of opportunity. When, you, when the Lord says, lift up your eyes now, now is when you've got to take, listen, it's faith. And what is the definition of faith? It's, it's, it's a God-given ability to see when no one, when anybody else sees nothing, you see provision when everybody else sees nothing. You see healing when everybody else sees this. That's faith. But you have to have courage. And I've spoken this way. Courage is what the ability to act on what you just heard. A lot of people have faith. But a lot of people need courage. I pray, listen, I pray more for courage than faith. Because the word says all I need is a mustard seed of faith. But I tell you what, I need a whole lot of courage. I need more courage than I do faith. I believe it. But now you got me to step out. You see... When you have a now word that's God speaking and it resonates inside of you now. And you say, okay, I got to do something what I just heard. I, 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 I know I got to do something. And what happens is it will challenge everything that you were thinking. You hear voices? You hear voices? Say yes. Yes. You hear many voices. How are you going? <laughs> You got, but, you got, but you got many kids over at your house. You got 35 on Monday night. You got a lot of voices. You hear the voice in your mind, in your spirit, screaming that it can't be done. But you just heard, I am healed. Yeah. Come on, you understand where I'm coming from? You heard, I am healed. But everything else said everything. He says, and now, this is verse 17. Now that you have, now that I showed you what you do, now guess what? You need what? Courage. Courage. And now arise. Uh-oh. That means get out your boat of comfort. I knew we were going somewhere with this. The faith is a risk. There is no money back guarantee. This is not a commercial where if you don't like the product, in 30 days you can return it. There's no such thing as there's risk, there's risk free faith. 
And when you know the Lord spoke to you, and you know that you know, then you have to do something. You have to rise up what you just heard and get out your boat of comfort because you'll never reach your destiny. Listen, I know it's easy to stay in the boat, man. It's comfortable. But you got to somehow or another believe what you just heard. And you're going to have to walk it out, man. You're going to have to walk it out, even though everything screams at you. The more we pray, the worse it gets. Yeah, it's going to happen. Why? You're shaking darkness, man. Man, I pray. The more I pray, man, I, I'm not praying anymore. Guess what? You killed it. Now you have to pray a little harder. You just activated some chains falling off of people. And people just, listen, devil ain't happy with people getting saved and getting delivered. So it's a fight on your hand. And the enemy plays dirty. But we have weapons. We have the word. Which plays clean. Amen. That was a freebie. And I'm learning this. You have to rise up. Why? Here's why. Little faith grieves God. Not on your screen. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, the word says, we know that part. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, please God. Because what he who comes to him, he who comes to God, must believe that he exists. See, it's not, it's, it's, you tie it all in. You must believe that he exists and he is able to do what you can't. He says, and if you do that, he says this. Then he rewards. Say rewards. That is, your, that is your trophy. That is your crown. He reward. Whatever your reward is right now, whether it be salvation for your kids, healing in your body, whatever your reward, he rewards those who diligently, diligently, diligently seek him. Amen. And so I'll put this on one screen. One thing. Take the limits off of God. Quit saying you can't, you can't do it. Quit saying I don't know if you can. This might be too much for him. He's not, listen, I learned this. He's not sweating it. I'm sweating it. I'm sweating now. Can you turn a little bit AC? I'm, I'm like sweating up, unless it's the Holy Ghost. Uh, we, we sweat it out. He don't. He's not surprised. He said, is there anything too difficult for me? You heard it. Is there anything too difficult for me? Uh, here, another thing. Dare to dream and think big. Think outside your box. Think, dare to dream and to think above and beyond what you expect. Yeah. Whew, that was when you opened up in prayer. You, you were expecting some big stuff there. That was taking the limits off of something. You know, to say what you just said. That was dreaming big. That was beyond Regina's. That was beyond her capability. Third thing is this, look for a now word. And I tell you, now is a rhema. Now. Something that inspires you now. Now. It's a window of faith. We know when Peter and the disciples were in the boat in a storm, and you know that Jesus knew the storm was coming and he sent them in the storm? You read the word. Jesus knew the storm was coming and he sent them out, on the, he sent them out to cross the lake and he knew the storm was coming. <laughs> Jesus wasn't surprised that there was a storm. He knew the storm was coming. He wanted to know how they were going to react in the storm. And the now word, when Peter, everybody seen Jesus out on the water. But Peter, bold as he is, and Peter has no filter. We have, we have friends and relatives like that. Don't name them. We know who they are. He said, Jesus, is that you? If tell me, come out on the water. I said, certain you're footing him out. And Jesus said, it's me, Peter. Come on out. <sighs> but see, it was a now word. And Peter knew that he heard the word. He had to believe the word. A lot of us know, but we have to believe. And he stepped out on the water. And I said this at a meeting. You heard this before. And everybody focuses on the negative. That all oh, what Jesus, well, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and he sank. I'll tell you this much, and somebody told me this a long time ago. I'd rather sink than sit. Amen. 
I'd rather have died trying than never have tried at all. I think in life we'll never regret the thing we we'll, we'll regret not the things that we didn't do because of fear. Because of fear, we won't regret the thing we regret what we didn't do when we knew that we heard the word and we knew it was a divine call and appointment of God, and we didn't do it because we gave up excuses. We'll regret that, but we will never regret stepping out. Man, they wanted me to go to a, see somebody in a hospital to speak in somebody's ear who's in a coma. And I just got back from Disney World, and my mind's all in Disney World thing, and I get a phone call saying, there's somebody at the hospital. You know what? I said, I'm going. Yeah. Because I know, what if I don't go? What if that's the time? And so I went to the hospital. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to speak in that guy's ear. Well, Brother D, suppose he don't wake up. Well, suppose, well he's not going to wake up if nobody said wake up. That's right. I'm not, I, right? So yours truly is going to go to the hospital, going to bend his ear. And I'm going to say, wake up from your slumbering spirit, says the Lord. Wake up your slumbering spirit. But they couldn't, you know what? He was in the COVID unit. They wouldn't let me in. But you know what? There's FaceTime. His grandson, I seen it, he was believing. Because this was crushing him more than anybody else. I could see it. I said, can I get in your phone and can you FaceTime me so I can get a hold of your papa? He said, I'll do it. Give me your number. So, listen, I just come back from Disney, man. I'm in Mouse World, understand? But I got to be ready in season and out of season. I can't be using the mouse as an excuse. So they put the phone, and I stuck it by, they stuck it in his ear, and I spoke into that man's spirit. Amen. I spoke that he would rise up, and I told his wife, call out your husband and tell him, come home, you need him. She's, the room, the atmosphere began to change in the room. Because hope was coming in. Yes. Next thing you know, I started hearing people that, were, that it wasn't of our faith, that they were, amen, 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 amen. What was happening here? I was changing the atmosphere of what the doctor said was going to happen. Amen. Yes. You know what? If it didn't, I don't. But you know what? I went. I went. I'd rather die trying than look back and go, well, what if I didn't? I don't look back and go, man, if you would have went, something would have happened. Well, no, I don't want to live in regret. I may have fumbled, but you know what? I'm running with the ball, man. I'm, I'll pick it up and I'll run again. Amen? Where are we going with this? Uh, and ble believe that there is nothing impossible with God. Come on. When man is impossible, with God, all things are possible. Say amen. amen. When man it is impossible, with you it's impossible, with God, all things are possible. Yeah. All right, two, here, let's go. Let's roll. Big, dream big. Never sell God short, never give up. Never sell God short and never give up. I'm going to go read this. In Ephesians, let's go to the NI, uh, New King James. Skip the message. Let's go to New, let's go to New King James. I can get both. Let's, let's go there. Save me some time. Here's why you can't give up. Say with me this. Now to him, now to him. Who, is who is able. Six words. Remember those words. It didn't say now to Bonnie, who can't do it, who is not able. He said now to him, who is able. So you change the focus. Again, you change the focus. It's not my healing, it's the one who can heal. Now to him who is able to do what? And it exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we ask, think, or dream, or imagine according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now I want you to remember this. And you need to declare and decree this. Put those six words up there. Now to him who is able. Now to him who is able. Now, you didn't wake up the day to save your soul. On three. One, two, three. Now to him who is able. Again. Again, now to, him who is able. to do. Yes. 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 
That's it. Those two words take everything. Now to him who's able to do what you and I can't do. Come on. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. I think it's warm because I think the Holy Ghost is flying. I think it's fire. Fire. Fuego, Edgar. Fuego. Fuego, Edgar. Fuego. Come on. Goodness. My goodness. Come on. Fire. Come on. You, y'all spoke it to earlier. Y'all said fire on me. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Blame it on Regina and Dave on Debbie. Blame it on two women. I'm going to do it. Blame it on two women. All the men said amen. Blame it on the women. Amen. Jeremiah 33 says, just call to me and I'll answer you. Come on, call to me and I'll answer you. And I will tell you some little picky, innocent, no, I will tell you marvelous and wonderful things because I'm a dreamer and he dreams big. Yes, that, well, come on. Things that you could never figure out on your own. Come on, man. Come on. I will tell you things that you couldn't figure out on your own. Because I am limitless. But I'm all powerful and all knowing. Come on. You got you, you you feel it. You feel faith arising right now? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Say Holy Ghost. Say yes. yes. All right. Now I'm gonna hit you hard here right now. Don't say yes or no. Do you have stretch marks? Don't say yes or no. <laughs> Don't want to know. Too much information. Where are your stretch marks? Don't I don't want to hear it. I'm talking about your stretch marks of faith. Amen. Where are your marks of faith? You went through something. Amen. You got the proof. Here's the diagnosis. Here it is right here. And I'm walking. I'm healed. Here's the mark right here. Here's the mark. Here's the mark. Here's the mark. Do you have stretch marks? Here you go. Here. I wrote this down. So I had to I'm gonna read it. Peter walked on water. Daniel slept with lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They walked and stood in the fire, tied up into a fire, furnace. They all had stretch marks left from stretching beyond their human ability and strength because they believed he was able to do what he said he was going to do. They stretched themselves to him. They stretched themselves to him who was able, and they risked their lives, their health, their reputation. They challenged their doubts when the doubts were screaming loud and clear, and they defeated all the objections, and they closed the mouth of the lions of unbelief, and they rose beyond mobs and crowds because they believed that he was able to do what he said he was going to do. They shut the mouth of lions in their mind that was telling them he was not able, he couldn't heal you, he couldn't do this. They said, I have, you have to shut up and get behind me, devil, because I know that he's a healer. And he said, this is a word today, you got to stretch yourself unto me. Stretch yourself unto me, because why? I live out on the water. <laughs> I live, I'm getting... I live out on the water and I'm not in the boat of comfort. Amen. If you want to come see me, walk out on the water and I'll be there. Amen. That's Holy Ghost. If you want to see me, walk out on the water and trust me. Because I don't live in the boat, I live out on the water. Amen. Come on. Are you getting this this morning? You can see I'm a little cranked this morning. I had, off, I, I had off two weeks. The motor was running. The motor was running in Disney. It was still running. You know me. He's running. Come on. No worries. That's where faith goes. All right. Here we go. Let's go on. Dream big. Expect, expect God. Expect great things from God. Expect. Expect. Here we go. Expect God to do something. This is why you need. I'll give you four little things right here. Very quick. Catch it. What is expectation? It's a strong belief that something will happen. Yeah. My kids didn't. My grandkids didn't wake up for Christmas going. I hope something's there, honey. They were expecting something there. I'm not causing trouble. <laughs> I blame on Marcy. 
In other words, they woke up with expectation. Because why? They knew that they knew that they knew that somebody was not going to disappoint them. It's called childlike faith. They were, you knew it was coming because you got the bill. <laughs> expectation. The act of looking forward. Now hear me out. Now, now catch this. This is, this, is, this is free. The devil cannot read your mind but he reads what you say. It's called the confession of your faith. And he listens to all the, want, the negativity of, of him, of, of positive negative, double, I'll call it double talk. You say one thing and go, God, you just blocked your blessing. Too many people in the church block their blessing. They say God can do it, I don't know if he can. You just pulled the limit off. You just pulled an opportunity out. And he lives, what he, he, the devil does not have the Holy Spirit in him, but he cannot discern truth. So he listens to what you say. And that's why as a believer, you have to have a confession of your faith. And I tell my wife this every day while she's going through this thing on her back, on her shoulder, I say, confess your faith, I am healed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Confess your faith, I am healed in Jesus' name. If the devil can work off confession, he just heard my confession. I am healed. I am above and not believe. I am above and not believe. Come on. I am the head and not the tail. I am more than a conqueror. I am able to do more than anything. See, I just told the devil what the I am was. Yes, you have to speak it. Amen. Where we go? Oh, here we go. Here's a story here out of Genesis. We miss this. This is Hagar and Ishmael. God gave a promise to two people. Abraham and Sarah pushed them out of the camp. And he said, you and the baby need to go and leave. And the baby was just a little baby. He was just, wasn't just barely weaned. And the word said, he gave them, Abraham gave them a couple days of water in a little sack. But how many knows eventually water does run out of a little pouch? And the word of God says this, and the water and the skin was used up. And the place where the boy was at underneath some trees, some scrubs, some trees. She said, the water's run out, he's still crying. And she said, he took the, she took the baby and she put him over by a little tree because like a mama, she didn't want, she couldn't take it, but she wanted to still see it was going to be all right, so she stayed a distance away, but she heard the baby crying. Sometimes we think God is so far from us, he can't even hear our cry. And she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about, about a bow shot, so wherever an arrow can fly. And for she said to herself, let me not see the death of this little boy. So she sat opposite of him and lifted up her voice and wept. She lifted up her voice and wept. It's called humility. And she wept. In verse 17, what happened? Let's go. God heard, God heard, our, God heard our prayers of the boy. God heard the promise. The promise was the baby. And God heard the promise screaming out. God hears your promise screaming out. Come on, that's a word in my spirit. God hears your promise screaming out. And, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you woman? What's happening? What's going on? And she said, he said, what's going on? And he told her, fear not. Those two words in the midst of a term all could just make a piece, two words, fear not. And sometimes you gotta tell yourself, fear not. Even though the voice screams at me, tells me everything. I have to say two words, fear not, fear not, fear not. For God has heard the voice of the lad when he was there. Verse 18, look, arise and lift up the lad and hold him in your hand. For I will make him a great nation. In verse 19, here's where we go to. And then God opened her eyes and she saw the water. Was the water already there already? I don't know. But when she lifted up her eyes, it would be on her circumstance. She saw her blessing. Yes. 
When she took her eyes off of her circumstance and put it on him, she saw a provision. Whether it was there or not, I'm just telling you this. Sometimes God is closer to your situation than you think. It's the word of my spirit today. Sometimes God is closer than you think. There we go. And they opened their eyes and saw the water, and she went and filled Filled his skin with water, and he gave the lad something to drink. And I'm going to close out with this. Four, dream big. God's plan is greater than your dreams. God's plan is greater than your dreams. And there's a story. I'm going to skip a few verses down. There was a man who was, um, who was um, at a pool because he was crippled for 30 something years, he was crippled. And he went to the, the pool every day. And his life, every day was going to this pool, hoping that an angel, they said, would stir the water. And as the water stirred, somebody would get in and they would be healed. What I'm telling you is this, all he could see every day of his life was his circumstance and he didn't see the one who could change his circumstance. Yes, and he needed somebody to imagine there's hundreds of people around this big pool and they're waiting. It's, it's about faith. Although there was a little ripple on the water and by faith somebody would get in and, and be healed. So there was expectation. There was just hope. And the word says, and then Jesus walked into this situation and he asked the man, what do you need? Do you want to get well? He gave him every excuse why he couldn't be healed. You read this. He gave him every excuse why he could not be healed. Because in his reality, the pool became his prison. And today, we make certain things our prison. And it's all we can see is our prison and not the freedom outside of the prison. Amen? Amen? Am, I, am, I, am I catching anybody this morning? Yeah. I'm closing this thing out. And Jesus, he was looking for somebody to help him in. He didn't know he was the God of the pool was Jesus was standing next to him. Amen. The God of the pool was standing right next to him. Jesus is closer than you think in your situation. And Jesus said, take up your mat and be healed. God's plans were bigger than the man's dreams. Yeah. Once you stand to your feet. But here is what you have to do. You got to dream big, Nat. Put it up there. <coughs> Next week's message, don't look back. 22 is 22. Don't look back. If you want to believe God for greater things, you can't look, you can't, you can't kill God. What was? Yes, amen. Right. I'm not the God of what was, I'm the God of I am now. Yes. Yeah. Once you lift your hands on this building right now. This morning, I don't know if I don't know who is in this building. We're gonna close this thing out. But this morning, let's get this right. Let's go. You want to get things right in 2023? Let's give our right. Let's get right with Jesus. Let's offer salvation to this house. Salvation. Anytime you need salvation, salvation in this room. If you need salvation, say, Pastor D, I need to be saved, man. I've been listening and listening and listening. I need to be saved. Amen. If today's that day, say, Pastor D, I want to be saved. I want to personally ask you to do in faith and courage is to believe and step out of the chair and walk down the aisle and meet me down the front. That's faith and courage. Faith, I believe. Courage, I'm going to get out where I'm at. I'm going to walk down the aisle and I'm going to go to the front believing that he is able to do. If that's you today, I'll offer that to you right now. Yes, hallelujah. Salvation. Every message will end to that. I will offer you a chance to come to the front and be ministered to and be saved or whatever you need. 
You will not walk out the building going, I wish he would have, I wish he could have. Come up to the front, sister. Barbara, minister. Yeah, my sister right here. Come to the front. You may have to rededicate yourself. Yeah, I am. I know that. I know. I've, been, I've been ran on my shoes. Sister Barbara, I want you to minister to her. Those around you, I want you to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Brother, I'll lift up my hand. You're not going to church. I'm just saying, Lord, I'll lift up my hand. Well, I'm expecting. Yes. Lord, I believe what that man, that pastor was saying. I'm believing it. So, Father, I'm going to expect this year. Yes. I'm going to anticipate. I'm going to hope. And I'm going to what? Have confidence. Expectation, anticipation brings hope. And hope brings confidence. And, Father, I'm going to stretch me to this year to believe in what I can't do on my own. I'm going to believe that he is able to do, regardless of what people tell me, regardless of what was said to me, spoken to me, spoken about, I'm going to have to believe he is able to do much more. But Lord, I can't look back. I can't look back. I have to move forward. And Father, I know this, that you stretch in my faith because you live out on the water, not in the boat of comfort. So, Father, I ask you right now, in Jesus' name, that you begin to stretch people. Stretch their faith to believe something that they thought could never happen. Let them dream big. Say dream big. Dream big. Dream big. In Jesus' name. Think big. Dream big. And believe that he is able to do what you cannot do. Amen? Amen. Amen.